Welcome to the Monday Monologue. Well, you can see we got our newest project sitting here in front of us that I'm working on. And I did realize that besides doing my business stuff and getting some products out to you guys that are interested in listening to some Skunky Designs equipment, I do need to keep working on making fresh builds and doing some new content as well as just keeping my skills sharp and continuing to learn about tube audio and how all this stuff works. And I've told you guys before, and I know some of you like to argue about this, but I'm not a like professionally classically trained engineer. I've done all this stuff learning on my own and I'm still learning. And I know sometimes you guys, you know, put things in the comments that are honestly techy beyond my understanding about like what's going on. And I feel like I have a very good kind of general idea and a lot of my ideas are kind of leanings on this stuff has been from trial and error testing things and I'm still learning like this week like I understood the load lines on the driver tubes I mean that was pretty simple you know easy to understand but the whole thing with the load lines on the output tubes and that especially on single-ended stuff where the DC load line's vertical, but then you got to look at the AC load line, and then the actual AC load line is just kind of a, hey, that's just kind of a slope that then you f move up the chart to get your actual, yeah, I mean, I, I went into all that on the latest video on this 6C33C, and I hope I got it right. I mean, I think I grasp what's going on and some of this stuff to me isn't intuitive and the descriptions that a lot of these engineer type people make they'll just kind of generally start describing this stuff and then they'll say and here's the math that explains it and then they've got a half page math formula that maybe the engineering type folks explains it instead of using English? I don't know. I've been reading a book about how to design power supplies. The same guy did a book about how to design preamps. And while I gleaned a little bit of knowledge out of it, that was the part that I struggled with was every time I would start to kind of understand, okay, I kind of get what's going on. And then it would be like, okay, in the next half a page is the math that explains it and for people that aren't math brain I mean, I'm a little bit but total math brain engineer people a half a page of math formulas doesn't explain anything it just confuses me and honestly I'm not gonna sit down and do all that math I'm just not gonna do it and even for my own uses simple formulas like Ohm's Law, I'd rather just go to a website and plug some numbers in and hit what is it. And it shows me exactly what I'm looking for. It'll convert it to milliamps. It'll show me the watts. Why am I wasting my brain power doing that stuff? Same thing with the bias calculations. I mean, I know how to do that. I've sat down and double checked just to make sure that's right. But there's a great web page, and I'll put these links below, that you plug in some numbers and you hit go and it'll tell you what percent of the bias it is. It doesn't matter whether it's push-pull or single in it or cathode bias, it'll tell you the percentages that it's at and there you go. You don't have to sit there and run through a bunch of math formulas. And that leads me into my second kind of rant today, which is dealing with digital audio. Yesterday I spent about a half a day fighting with a problem I was having with my main computer that I use for editing videos. And I do build my own PCs out of, you know, parts I select after careful studying, like what the latest greatest is. And then I've got kind of my pet parts that I like. Like I, I like Intel processors. I like NVIDIA video cards. And so anyway, got the latest greatest about 
six months ago, and it is crazy fast. It's got like 10 cores or something running at 5 gigahertz, and it edits videos or processes videos in five minutes that used to take 40 minutes with my old PC. And so, huge upgrade, but it recently started doing this thing where the taskbar would just freeze. And I would be just trying to pull up a program that was already open by clicking on the little quick link below or where it was you know on the taskbar and the computer would freeze up for about 45 seconds and then finally it would open up and then sometimes it wouldn't sometimes I'd have to restart the computer and then I'd restart the computer and it would work fine for about 20 minutes and then it start doing this again and so I'm running system file checkers and I'm running you know going through all of these different diagnostic procedures and repair you know command line stuff and found a web page where a guy that's a computer scientist I guess was explaining here do this 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 and this this was on Windows 11 and between that and updating the drivers and they had a new BIOS for the motherboard and got all that working and then honestly the other thing that was weird and this is kind of a sidetrack when I was building that computer it had four RAM slots right and so I figured, hey, I'll go get four 16 gig sticks of RAM that was the fast or the super fast RAM that this new computer could use and get 64 gigs of RAM and I'm ready to go for all my video editing and stuff. Well, it turns out an undocumented limitation on this new processor is if you use more than two sticks of RAM, the second two sticks of RAM won't run at full speed. And so you're limiting the processing power of the whole system if you don't put all the RAM on two sticks. And they don't tell you that. And it took hours of research to figure out what was going on. And just so you don't think that I'm a techie, illiterate person, I know how to write C code. And I know how like the TCP IP network stuff works at a core level and all that kind of stuff. So I do understand technology. But how does this relate to audio? I don't want to fight with that stuff when I'm going to listen to music. And when you get a streamer box or you're doing that sort of thing, it just feels like back in that loop of, have you done an update? Have you done a firmware update? Are you making sure that you're downloading the correct file type? I know when I was first listening to my streamer, with Amazon Music, for some reason it was defaulting to the MP3s and it wouldn't play the high def files. So I had to log in and log out of both the apps on my phones. I had to do the same thing on, I've got two PCs and a laptop, had to do the same thing on all of that before it would release whatever limitation that it has on a single user where I could actually stream from my phone to the streamer or the streamer could access the HD files and I don't know it was because the phone was trying to access it and then the streamer was trying to access it too and very likely the other streaming services maybe don't have that limitation or it doesn't have that kind of issue but I was going this doesn't sound right and then it's like oh okay this is what we need to be doing and then make sure that it says that it's HD on the phone when it's streaming and then I'm like okay is it HD on my phone or is it HD on the streamer and how do I know? Just when I put an album on and I drop the needle, I know I don't need to do a firmware update. I know there's not like a driver that I need to fix or that the connection from the Wi Fi isn't on the right bandwidth to get the best quality. When I drop the needle, it's just dropping the needle. It's all analog. And for me, it's just nice to get away from that whole world. And I did a big rant on my Facebook page, or my personal one, about how one of the most stressful things in my life right now is dealing with all the different communication channels that in today's society we have to deal with. I've got Two cell phones. I got my personal one and one for my city, you know, on the city council. I've got 
about four or five email addresses that I have to keep up with. I've got the Skunky Designs forum that I got to keep up with. I've got direct messages on all these different forums that I'm active in. I got Facebook. I've got instant messenger from that. And, you know, I've got text coming in on this phone. I've got emails coming in on this one. And then even on my Skunky Design stuff, and I can't figure out how to do this unless somehow people are just using a weird way of contacting me. I tried to switch the form on my website so it just forwards that to my email. And most of them seem to, but I think some folks have some old email address or link that they're using where it forces me to go back to the Wix inbox to find their messages to respond to them. And so... That's one of the things I like about analog audio is it disconnects me from that whole world. And I know that may sound like a weird thing, but it feels like it's a meditative change from the reality of today's world that it's not digital. I'm not connected to the internet. I'm not having to like make sure that this technology is all happening like it's supposed to and the ones and zeros are all doing what they're supposed to do and is it bit perfect and all that stuff. It's a needle in a groove. And there's something comforting about that to me. So, anyway, that was kind of my rant for the week. Hope some of you guys understand what I mean by that. I still like using my digital stuff or my streaming stuff for listening to casual music. I'm actually really liking this E70 topping little unit and I'm actually surprised how good just streaming Bluetooth to that box sounds. Especially like I said for just casual listening and I'm not just critically listening is this the best possible. If I just got some music playing in the house it really does a good job just streaming Bluetooth off of my phone. And I don't know if there's been an improvement in that technology. It does say that there's like two different kinds of Bluetooth streaming. I haven't done a bunch of research on that. But anyway, it almost seems easier than using my Blue Sound node, trying to get Amazon Music to work with it and using their implementation of the Amazon Music thing, which seems kind of clunky, that with this topping E70, I can just pull up the app on my phone and hit play and it comes out. Plus I like how the E70's got a volume knob and again I'm going to be playing with the balanced audio stuff so that's cool. I'll do a review on that topping E70 soon. I'm really liking that little DAC. So anyway, this project's going to be really cool. I got an update to it. I think I finally figured out what I'm doing with it. And I know to some of y'all, you may be watching this video series going like, what is she doing? She's just all over the map. She's talking about doing this, and maybe I'll do that, maybe I'll do this. And I'm just trying to show y'all that when I'm going through, especially the initial phases of figuring out how I want to build a project or an amp, that I am jumping all over the place. And I'm not just like, I found this schematic on the internet and I'm going to build it just like this guy does and follow it in a cookie cutter thing. I'm looking at it as like, hey, is there something left on the table? Not, not saying that like, like in this case, DHT Rob did an awesome job with his build. But do I want to just follow that to the letter? Or do I want to put my little spin on it and think outside the box a little bit and go, hey, maybe we can just drive one of the triodes and push it super hard, have less heat, and make it easier for the input tube to drive, and maybe get a different sound out of it. And trying to figure out how to do it on a budget. Like I did present to you two different options on doing either this 6C33C or doing the 4E27. And in the back of my mind, I had the 4E27 being a really high-end build. 
Like I'm going to use ISO Tango Iron. I might even use complete ISO Tango everything. Chokes Power Transformer, the whole bit. And I'm going to use some of those super nice extruded aluminum, you know, with aluminum plates and oak sides chassis. And I'm going to put a link below to the website where you can buy those chassis. He gave me a nice discount on those chassis this time. For one thing, I ordered four of them at the same time, which obviously you get a volume discount on that kind of stuff. But also told him I'm going to feature it on the channel. And so I want to start doing that too. His chassis are super freaking nice. So up here is the website address. He's also got a store on eBay, but I would just buy them direct from him. And yeah, you know, it might take a day or two for him to get back to you. Some, you know, a lot of people don't jump on their emails. So be patient. I'm the same way. Sometimes when people send me emails, it might take me two or three days to respond, but I usually get back to people. So anyway, like I said, I want to do this build as budget as possible. And so that's why I'm kind of changing some things up and trying to keep the spirit of what that DHT Rob amp was while using some easily available iron and stuff that could be had internationally. So we're getting rolling on that. Ready to put the order in for the parts. So I'll have this uploaded hopefully either this afternoon or tomorrow. And once again though, don't build this thing until I get done with it. It might not work at all. Or it might be crazier. It might be like, hey, none of this iron worked. I'm going to have to redo this or revisit it or wire it differently or whatever. So, hey, if you want to try to do it along with me, just be warned that it might change. And it might change drastically. So, anyway, I know I'm kind of maybe all over the place on this Monday monologue today. But... I don't know, just lately that's kind of the way my brain's been working is just kind of being like here and there and jumping all around. So here we are. You're getting a little taste of what's going on in Skokie's brain. So again, I want to thank all you loyal followers on my channel. And I want to thank you folks that participate in my Patreon donation kind of thing that helps me be able to afford to go out and build these projects because I mean this thing's probably still going to be a thousand dollars worth of parts and then I don't know what I'm going to do with it when I get done with it maybe I'll sell it to one of you viewers when I'm done with it I kind of need to start doing that I can't keep just building amps and keeping them here got more than I can listen to so again thanks for all you folks that support by watching subscribing by Participating in Patreon, and especially folks that give donations to my website. I really appreciate that. That lets me know I'm on the right track. So, anyway, I think that's going to wrap it up. And we'll see you next week for the Monday Monologue. <laughs>